something else here. Start again. Deutsch. Espanol. Italiano. Ruski. Not a flicker in any language. Ni oi canton yan wani. What? Well, he could be Chinese, couldn't he? I think we'll drop this line of inquiry. Stand up a minute, Skipper, will you? <clears throat> Borrowed clothes, I should say. Let's have a jacket off a minute. Labels removed. No name. No papers. No money. No tongue. Maybe he's come from outer space. Dr. Paul's just arrived. Good. Nothing in the Paris hospitals. For one thing's certain, he didn't come from Mars or that. Look at these hands. They've done a lot of hard work with these clothes, haven't they? Maybe some dust in the pockets. Yes, there is. Get it analysed. Right. And uh, see if they can find out where the coat was made. Right, Petrol. All right, Skipper, sit down. Ah, oh, Dr. Paul. Make How are you? What do you make of this? <whistles> Beautiful. In what way? That was a bullet wound. It should have killed him. It's a brilliant piece of surgery. I'd like to meet the man who did it. So would I. I mean the one who performed the operation. Any suggestions? Surgeons don't sign their handiwork. Pity. Mm. Did someone try to kill him? Presumably. Did someone try to save him? Did someone dressed him up in borrowed clothes, took him to a doctor, and then what? Interesting, but uh, he can't speak. Not a syllable. Will he ever, do you think? Oh, there may be irreparable damage to the brain. It may be just shock. I can't give a definite opinion until I've seen x-rays. He might even recover any minute. Shall we put out a photocopy, Peton? Yeah. Ah, oh, but... Like that. Excuse me, Doctor. Carry on, my dear. Come back! Lily! 
all that about? Well, it must have been something she saw in the paper, I should think. No, my dear. Nothing of interest. When are you going back to school, Armand? Thursday, Papa. Dr. Carno thinks he ought to stay at home for another two days. Carno? You look well enough now. I think you should go back tomorrow. We owe it to the school, Armand. We have our position to think of. Never forget that. I've got the name of the surgeon. Runs a small clinic near Monet. A Dr. Hmm. Pascal specializes in brain surgery. He's wasted there. He doesn't think so. They found Joris on the steps about three months ago. He'd been dumped there like an abandoned baby. A thousand francs pinned to his pocket and that's all. Two days ago they let him dress for the first time and they haven't seen him since. Small clinic near Monet. Huh? Get all you can from this Dr. Pascal and see if anyone in the town noticed a strange car wandering about three months ago. They weren't, but never mind. That driver may have asked to be directed to the clinic. Patron, the girl's here. Come in, mademoiselle. Oh, Captain. Oh, Captain. Well, well you know me. Well, you must. It is surely. What have you done to him? We've done nothing, but... He's been shot in the head. Shot? But, I, but that can't be true. No one would hurt the captain. Everyone loved him. They... I'm afraid somebody didn't. Now, come and sit down. Tell me his name. Uh, oh, it's Captain Yoris. He was harbour master at Honfleur. Honfleur? No, one did. They can't. Yeah. So, how well did you know him? Well, I've worked for him since I was 16. He, he treated me like a daughter. He, he was still at sea then. He retired last year and got the job of harbour master. When did he disappear? Oh, about three months ago. One morning I made his coffee and he, he just wasn't there to drink it. Did anyone try to find him? By the sea and the fog, it's easy to drown. They dragged the harbour. Mm -hmm. He had no enemies, eh? Never in his life. He drank much. Maybe one glass with friends over cards, but that's all. How much money? Well, he'd save enough to build a little house. There wasn't much over. He won't be like this always, will he? He'll be cured. I, I mean, I'd take care of him. Can I take him back to Honfleur? Yeah, by the next train. <sighs> the lab report on the jacket. Made in Norway. Norway? Traces of dried cods are in the pockets. Oh, well, he's a sailor. Who is? Well, he's not wearing his own clothes.
Captain. Captain, you're home. This is where you live. He knows his own chair. Captain. Captain, look. Here are your slippers. He's beginning to remember. Look, you see the bird of paradise you brought from New Guinea a long time ago? And here's the little elephant that always brought you luck. You watch his face, he knows. Oh, I forgot. You have a letter. Can't you read? I can. How much money did you have in the bank? About 1,500 new francs. And this letter's from his bank. It says that 5,000 has just been paid into his account. 5,000? Captain, who gave you that money? Captain, who did this? He's tired. Yes, I'll take him up to bed. Go on, Skipper. Come along, you're going to sleep now. Louis. Evening, Monsieur Le Maire. It'll be a foggy one, Andre. I hope you're wrong, Monsieur. Mm. He doesn't speak. He just lies on his bed. But he smiles at me, monsieur. Do you think he'll get better? Perhaps if he were to see me, another familiar face. Oh, yes. Yes, he always liked you so much. He worked for me for many years. I'm going to take him this milk. I'll see if he's awake. Again. Better, of course. Ah. It was your move, Captain. What about you, <laughs> How can I move when you take the board, you silly old fool? All right. The fog's going to get thicker. Yes, I know. I know. It's thicker than the night Captain Joris left. It's the Inspector from Paris. Hmm? Oh, good evening, Inspector. It's going to be a dirty night. Yes, you have a lot of fog around these parts? Oh, we're famous for it. Have a glass. Uh, thank you, no, we're still on duty till 10 tonight, when the tide turns. It's the only time we can get the boats through the canal. Oh, uh, <laughs> Captain Delcor, harbour master. Bernard, customs. Carnot, the doctor of medicine. Doctor Carnot? I shall be delighted to drink with you, Inspector. Madame, sit down, Inspector. Thank you. So you have found Joris for us, Inspector. Well, exactly. He found me. Tell me, 
How far up the canal do the boats go? Oh, not very far, just through the lock into the basin. No further? Uh, there is nothing further. Just turn around and come back. Hmm. So, uh, if one wanted to go, for example, to Marnay? Only by road. I see. Sante, Doctor. Sante. I think I've just seen your mayor outside. Oh, I wonder where he was off to. <laughs> well, not duck shooting tonight, at any rate. The <laughs> Are there an important family around here? Oh, he runs this part of the world. For what it's worth. Rich? Well, there was a rumour a few years ago that things weren't so good. Then he got married. Now he owns half the ships you see in the harbour. Hmm. Captain Jury's worked for him for years. Did he became harbour master? And now you've got the job. Well. He's drunk some of the milk. Captain? Captain, it's the mayor. He's come to see you. Joris. Joris? He remembers you, I'm sure. Do you remember me? Do you remember? Captain! Captain! Poor fellow. Captain Jory seems a good sort of man. Oh, one of the best, monsieur. What about Julie? Was there anything between them? Never, Inspector. Oh, is she any men friends? Oh, not Julie. She's a good girl. Mm. Well, who is Louis? Louis? Oh, that's her brother. Big hulking fellow. Yes, he killed a man in a fight once. He got eight years for it. Where is he now? Oh, he's a deckhand on the Saint Michel. Mm. I haven't seen him for weeks. Well, he will. Tomorrow. She's due in from Facon. Huh? Back to duty. That's the last one for tonight. Doctor! Doctor! I want the doctor. It's Captain Yoris. He's dying. He's dying. <laughs> lose the war. But I, I thought he was getting better. But he recognized the mayor, I'm sure he did. It could have happened at any time. The thrombosis. Any added shock? A shock? Yes. Tokyo. Santiago. Valencia, sailors' postcards. Pass me the letters, will you, Grandma? I'll see who that is, will you? I don't want to be interrupted unless the matter's urgent. The inspector, Monsieur Le Maire. Ah, Chief Inspector Maigret, of course. Monsieur. Forgive me for not making your acquaintance yesterday with the duties of a mayor, you know. And magistrate, presumably. As you see, I was just conducting a preliminary investigation. Can I get you a cognac, Inspector? Thank you, no. Unfortunately, my wife is away. She had to take my son to his school at Rouen, and she decided to go on and spend a few days in Paris. Well, this is a sad business, Inspector. Were you friendly with Captain Joyce? Friendly? Well, that implies a social relationship. He was one of my captains for many years. A reliable man. Uh, did you see him on September the 16th? The day he disappeared. I don't mean socially, of course. I didn't see him at all. But you came to see him yesterday. Oh, yes, that was a duty. At least he saw a friendly face before he died. Yes, yeah, of course. Uh, do your ships carry Codsrow, dried Codsrow? No. I have some more questions, monsieur. Is this an interrogation, Inspector? Uh, dried Codsrow comes from Norway. Do your ships go to Norway? Very seldom. Did Captain Joris ever go there? I can't see what affair it is of yours, Inspector, but as a matter of fact, his last trip was to Norway, to Tromsø. Tromsø? Why Tromsø? He was carrying fish canning machinery from Hull. Now, if you'll excuse me, Inspector, I really have a great deal of work to do. Perhaps I can assist you uh, in your investigation, Monsieur. 
I have here Captain Joris's will. He left various items to friends, and the bulk to Julie. I see. Inspector Megret, I am not a professional investigator, of course, but I do know this district. In fact, I might say that my family created this district. Hmm. Let me warn you against trying to do too much on your own. I accept the warning. Monsieur. Ah, how's the Lamont affair, Thomas? Oh, it's all sewn up. And now he's in hospital having his face sewn up. <laughs> Anything else? No, nothing. Nothing? In that case, I can safely leave you and Jean Vier in charge. I'm off to Enfleur to join the patron. He says the fog there is too thick for one man to see through. Aye, aye, aye. It's a very, very glamorous bit of beachwear. Beachwear? Sure, silk pajamas. Cost me a week's salary. I keep them under the pillow in case of fire. <laughs> Nice. Well, I told you we're famous for it. Sergeant Lucas, Captain Delco. Monsieur. Sit down, Inspector. Thank you. Oh, not that chair. It's a bit shaky, I'm afraid. Yeah. We're doing all the shouting in here just now. Shouting? Oh, it was Big Louis, I expect. Julie's brother? Yes. Which way did he go? I uh, didn't see. You got that list I asked you for? By the way, here it is. See for yourself. The Captain Juris put 11 ships through the canal on the 16th of September. And then? Well, then he just disappeared in the fog and was never seen again. Where are all these boats now? Bordeaux, Amsterdam, Hull, anywhere. I see the Saint Michel is among them. Yes, I believe she is. She's back in Fréco. Uh, that's right, yes. She's uh, anchored a bit off. Well, I'd like to go aboard it. Remains that for me? Very well, I will. Why not now? The tide's right. So it is. All right, I'll take you myself now. Thank right. you. Shall I come with you, Petron? No, I can manage the harbor. What will I do? Contact Torrance. Get him to check on any car, hired or stolen, in the car area. Any idea of the driver? Somebody deals in Cod's Road. Norwegian, probably. A Norwegian. And then? The mayor. What about him? He sent his son back to school two days early and his wife to Paris to find out where she's staying and why he wanted them both out of the way. And perhaps he's expecting something tonight. Or someone. Luca. <laughs> hey, I knew I wouldn't need my pajamas. Pajamas? Mm. Look very good on you, madame. <laughs> <laughs> Bonsoir. Bonsoir, sir.
All clear, then. Fair enough. Hold on down, Inspector Maigley. Are you Julie's brother? Yes. I killed a policeman once. Well, I hope once is enough. You'll have a drink? Thank you. Your health, then. So dear. How well did you know Captain Joris? Well enough. Yesterday, when your sister was in Paris, you went into his house. Well, why shouldn't I? Oh, no, we... Sit down, we needn't argue. You had a meal there. I was hungry. And you left a note warning her that Joris was in danger. Well, she was going to bring him back. Back here, where he'd already been shot in the head. How do you know he'd been shot in the head? Was it in the local paper? Well, must have been. So it was here in this port that he I didn't say the port. Another part of Montfleur? Did you see it happen? If I had, I would have told you, wouldn't I? Had loose blocks rattling again. Go up and see to it, Celesta. Straighten the bunks, Louis. How many of you sleep down here? The three of us. Me, Celesta, Big Louie. Mm -hmm. No more, eh? Tell me, on the 16th of September, the ship was uh, here on the day that Jolies vanished. Where did you go then? Norway? No, Hamburg. Put on your cap, Louis. <laughs> now, which one of you lot uses a clothes brush, eh? That's no clothes brush. We use that for scrubbing the table. Show him, Louis. I'm uh, sorry, Inspector, there's another boat due. I must go. I'm oh, just coming. Captain Lanark, do you own this boat? Yes, I bought her eight years ago. Oh, must be the first time in eight years you've ever had your table scrubbed with a brush like that. I got it in the street in Amsterdam for a few francs. Tortoiseshell and uh, silver. Mm -hmm. My dinghy, it's uh, gone. Luck. I've got to get ashore. I think somebody else wanted to get ashore too. Your passenger was in a hurry. I don't carry passengers. Must have slipped its painter. Big Louie will take you off in the ship's dinghy.
that big, Louis? do with a drink first and a cigar. What are you doing here? I'd better go and get the police. Well, you'd better stay there while I go and get the police. I am the police. Here, yeah, under my hands. You've no idea where Inspector Maker is? At his hotel. He isn't there, I've looked. Oh, well, then he's gone back again, hasn't he? <laughs> you should have been a detective, madame. <laughs> Ah, Petron. I've been looking for you. You're up early. You had breakfast? No. Cognac, please. Large one. Uh, that's a fine breakfast. What do you want afterwards? Another one. <laughs> you look as if you had a bad night. What happened? Indigestion. Well, why don't you find out? Well, Madame Grandmaison took her son back to school in Rouen, as you said. She did go to Paris. She booked in at the Hotel Lutece. She was telephoned from here by her husband, I suppose. Well, find out, make sure. What did Therese find out about the car? Nothing, Petron, nor uh, the Norwegian. Uh, you think I'm having hallucinations, don't you? <laughs> There's someone missing from this puzzle somewhere. 
Someone whom a lot of people are very interested in hiding. And I think I saw him last night. What you find out about Monsieur Grand Maison? You were right again. He had a visitor. Big Louis? Yes. Come on. Where the hell are they? This rate we'll miss the tide. This will be Louis. Where's Louis? I don't know. What do you want him for? I want to know who passed me in the fog last night, just before Big Louis jumped me. Tell them what you're talking about. About your passenger. Captain Lanark, who really owns this boat? I told you I do. Get me the ship's papers. Ship's papers? Yes, find them! Are they here yet? No, they're not here. Come on down, Big Louie. Oh, we'll miss the tide. Well, Louis, you've gone up in the world. I didn't know you owned this boat. What of it? How much did you pay for it, eh? Who gave you the money? The man who was with you last night? Come on, Louis. Stand, Louis. A few minutes after you jumped me last night, some man telephoned Madame Grand Maison to tell him Paris. The call came from the local phone box. I might have seen who made it if I hadn't been got out of the way. Who was it? The real owner of this boat? Did he shoot Johnny's? No. I... You're all local men, aren't you? Who are you afraid of? Grand Maison? He can't hurt you. He doesn't own this boat. No. Well, who does? What was your last voyage? Come on, it's easy enough to find out. Norway. Trump's over, isn't it? Yes. Is this boat Norwegian owned? The boat belongs to Big Louis. Yeah, that's what it says here. Well, you're loyal at any rate. Luca. I'm going over to Cormizon. You wait here. Good. What am I waiting for? Have a drink? I don't mind if I do. Back over there, where I can see you. Come on, come on. I have already told you, Inspector. I missed my footing and fell downstairs. What did you land on? The floor, naturally. Not Big Louis' fist. Get out of my house. He may be back. You're going to need protection. I don't want protection. Now, will you please leave my house? Why did Big Louis beat you up? Hmm? What do you want from him? What was in that letter you gave him? Inspector Megray, I am the head of the most powerful and important family in this district. For centuries, no one has ever questioned our rights or our duties. I warn you that if you do so now, I have the power and the influence to ruin you. And I shall. Monsieur Grandmaison, let me remind you that an apparently harmless man has lost his life in very strange circumstances. And it's my job to find out why. Now, who phoned your wife at the Hotel Lutece last night? I did. From a call box? I have checked with the exchange. I, I was away from the house and I, I was anxious. Did you tell her to collect your son from school? She did so an hour ago in a car. Yes, yes, I did. Why? Well, because he... That is my affair, Inspector. Where are they going? To the Saint Michel? Who are they going to meet? Who are they going to meet? The owner of the boat? The owner is Big Louis. And who is this man? There is no one. No one. Captain Lanark! Captain Lanark, we're here. Run, Raymond, run! Don't do it, Raymond. Welcome aboard. I have nothing more to say, Inspector. Madame Grandmaison? Yes? 
This is a surprise. I wasn't expecting you. Who are you? Chief Inspector Mekwe. Why are you so surprised that I should visit my own home? It is just a visit, then. You're not staying. Well, are you staying? No. I came to say goodbye. This is the end of my family. The end of what? What is a family but people who love each other? It would be slightly ridiculous for us to start speaking about love now, wouldn't it, Ernest? If you mean it's the end of your business, don't worry. You can keep the money. Your money? Yes. How much? A lot. What are the terms of the marriage settlement? Did you keep control of the money? Yes, but I never stopped him using it to keep the shipping line going. After all, that's what he married me for, to keep the family from bankruptcy, to save its honor. What honor have I left now? Goodbye, Ernest. One moment, Pardon. I've got your man. He is a Norwegian. He had the boy Armand with him. Do you want him in? Yeah. Is it? What is your name? Raymond Martineau. Martineau? From Norway? Naturalized French by birth. Ah. What do you do for a living? I have several factors in Tromso. Fish canning, processing. Do you deal in uh, powdered codswell? Yes, I do. It's used for bait. You know, we found some in the pockets of the clothes that Captain Joris was wearing. Uh, they'd fit you better. We know how he's lost his life, you know. You're wrong about that, Inspector. He wasn't killed by the shot. No, by shock. By the shock of seeing the man who fired it. Have I your permission, Inspector? You're not leaving the house, Monsieur? No. On your honor? My honor. Sit down, please. Well, what's your real name? You know it, of course. Grand Maison. Mm. Grémont Grand Maison. Ernest is my cousin. Why did you go to Norway? I once worked for Ernest as a clerk. I was the poor relation and wanted to live like a rich one. So I borrowed money from the firm. Ernest found out. He gave me 24 hours to get out of France. He also preserved the evidence and saw it had me arrested if ever I set foot back here. Armand is your son, isn't he? It'll be quite easy to check on dates. Today is the first time I've ever seen Armand. It's also the first time I've seen Hélène in 14 years. Did Ernest know about the child? Oh, I suppose Hélène's money was more important to him. And he had a position to keep up. And you, madame? What else could I do? I didn't know where Raymond was. There was no word for him. I wrote that Ernest is a power in this land. Obviously, Hélène never got my letters. When did you first hear about your son? A few months ago. Captain Yoris came to Tromso with some machinery for my factory. It was his last trip before he retired and became harbour master. In a way, he told me. I nearly went out of my mind. So Captain Joris arranged for you to buy the Saint Michel. Well, that was the only thing to do. Joris and I had always been good friends. He arranged with Louis and the crew to help me. They were to get the ship ready while Joris and I broke in here. We knew that Ernest was out duck shooting, but unfortunately he came over foggy, he came back unexpectedly and caught us. Now, Gray, I don't think that Ernest meant to kill me, but he was surprised and he had a gun. And Yoris stood between us. Ernest even helped to carry Yoris from the house. I had to leave the boy. I thought Yoris was dying. He shot Yoris. So you thought you had a dying man on your hands. What did you do then? Well, the man was wounded. He needed help. I had to find a doctor. I went to Dr. Carnot. He advised me to take Yoris to the clinic at Monet. 
And there I, I left Fioris on the steps. I rang the bell and went away. Poor devil. But I thought if he lived, I could collect him in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. But you found him first. And that gave me my second chance. With you on the scene, I knew that Ernest would be terrified of a scandal. So I blackmailed him through Big Louie. Then I got in the way, huh? Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Inspector. No, I should think so, too. Did you tell him to get rough with Gromis or as well? No, 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 no. I simply said to threaten him with the police unless he wrote a letter to my son's school handing the boy over to me. There was no need for violence. But Big Louie was a friend of Vioris, too. Ernest! Don't you realize what he's done? He knew he'd have to stand trial for the death of Yoris. Oh, the poor man. Poor, poor man. Take her down to the Saint Michel before the tide turns. Mr. Martino, your son is in the hall. I think you better take him with you. Thanks. Uh, another cognac, monsieur? Hey, thank you, madame. Now no, I need some sleep. Monsieur? Monsieur? Is Inspector Mercury here? Uh, I'm waiting for him. Do sit down. Thank you. Glass of wine? No, thank you. Captain Jarvis's death was a very big shock for you, wasn't it? Yes. They tell me Monsieur Grand Maison's dead, too. Shot. That's right. Well, who did it? Well, we don't suspect foul play. Well, I, I have his handkerchief here. I ought to take it out to the house, but there's no one there. I expect he left it in the room when he came to see Captain Norris. How do you know it's his? Well, it, it has his crest on it. The family crest, eh? Still looks like any other dirty linen, doesn't it? 